Hey, this is Russ. You know, there is no norm when it comes to knee replacement. Now, recently I had a viewer ask me about something and she asked, is that normal? Okay. Uh, first off, I don't know what's normal because I'm probably the worst guy to ask because I am totally abnormal <laughs> when it comes to knee replacement because I'm going on 17 months. In a couple of days, it'll be 17 months and I'm still dealing with it. Okay. If, if I'm going downstairs, just walking down the stairs, one leg after the next, I feel it in my knee to the point where I feel uneasy going down the stairs still, all right? It's not like I can't go leg after leg because I am doing that now, but I'm holding onto the railing, I'm holding onto a cane, and I can still feel that left knee have issues going down. I can feel it every single step, okay? So is that normal? No, that's not normal. And how long should it take? I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. All right. So if you ask me questions like, um, is it normal? I'm probably the worst guy to ask what's considered normal because I am way off the chart <laughs> for getting this thing taken care of. Okay. But I will say that um, everyone's curious what the norms are. Okay, so when, when they tell you that, you know, uh, after several months, you should be okay, how long is several months? <laughs> are we talking two? Are we talking three? Are we talking four? In my case, are we talking 17? <laughs> I, I don't know what normal would be. My scar doesn't look good. Is that normal? I don't know. <laughs> Looks okay to me, but, but I've seen some, okay, I've seen some really good scars, <laughs> all right, where you can't even tell it's a scar, really. It's so cleanly done. Um, there's no norm. <laughs> so to answer your question is, is there a norm to this all? And the answer is no, there's no norm. You, you, can't, you can't base it on anything. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about today, all right? I had a question. Um, uh, somebody asked me if I could ask you guys, how many staples did you have for your scar? That's a good question, okay? I never thought about it. And I don't I don't know either, so I had to count, all right? Let me put a photo up here of my scar with the with the with the uh, or I should say my incision with the uh, staple still in it. Okay, so I counted it. 23 for me, okay? How many did you have? All right, put up put a comment below. How many how many staples did you have? Cuz she asked me if I could ask you guys what you have for staples. I had 23. I think she had more than that. Okay. So, um, and, and then also if, if you didn't have staples, all right, what did you have? All right. Did you, did you have the super glue method? Now, super glue is interesting to me because whenever I think of super glue, I think of fingerprinting. <laughs> and the reason is because of my forensic background. We used to use super glue. It's, it's actually called cyanoacrylic, I believe, something like that. Uh, uh, super glue fuming method and what, what we would do is we would put evidence inside like a, a fish tank maybe like a five gallon or is that a 10, 10 gallon 10 maybe it's a 10 gallon I don't know how big these tanks are we would put the evidence in there like okay let's say we have a gun all right we would put the evidence inside the super glue tank uh, we would open up the super glue pack because it was like a little packet all right and we'd hang it inside there, put a little bit of humidity in there, like some warm water in a beaker, something like that. And then we would leave it there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever length of time it needed. And it essentially would fix the fingerprint to the gun if there's fingerprints on there, okay? And then after, after uh, a length of time goes by, you could actually see like white powdering uh, forming, forming the finger, fingerprint, okay? And then after that, uh, we would photograph it, and then we would uh, take a standard fingerprint powder and then dust it for prints, essentially, right? and then lift the print. And you can do it multiple times because that fingerprint is kind of stuck on there now. All right? Here's an interesting thing about this super glue stuff. The way they figured this out was they, they saw that uh, you know, the super glue, when it's sold to you in packages, right? You know, think about when you buy standard super glue. Uh, it's in a little plastic... Um, I don't know, like a bubble container thing, right? Like cardboard, then there's a bubble thing, and then the super glue is inside there. They found out that um, people who touched the inside of that packaging, their fingerprints would show up on there. That's how they found out that, hey, super glue develops fingerprints. <laughs> That's a little side note, <laughs> a little bit of forensics for you, okay? 
So, anyways, I think of that. But when when they uh, they said that super glue was being used to, to seal incisions, I go, whoa. Yeah, I could see that because you know if you if you glued your finger together, <laughs> it's kind of hard to take that off, right? They're using super glue to do that, right? And of course, recently we've heard about the uh, the woman who who used. Uh, <laughs> Gorilla glue on her hair. Remember that? <laughs> if you don't know about that, go go search on YouTube and certain and look for that. Okay. Um, yeah, people are using things that they shouldn't be using the way they shouldn't be using. All right. But hey, uh, super glue. All right for your knee. Okay. If you had that done, let me know. Put a comment below and tell me how your knee is is doing with that. Okay. And we should actually do this too. All right. You know we've been doing these uh, knee patient things. Um, you know, if you don't want to be featured, but you want to send me a photo of your knee, <laughs> couldn't do that, all right? Maybe we should do a collection of um, knee photos. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing. Yeah, uh, let's do a collection of knee photos. If you want to send me a photo of your knee, I'll, I'll put it up there anonymously, of course, and we can take a look at some of these things. How's that? That would be a good video. <laughs> If you're brave enough to send it to me, okay? But again, um, if you send anything to me, realize that it could be used for video and that you are giving approval and um, permission to use that photograph, all right? I got to have that little disclaimer in there, okay? So let's do that. So this video, what are the things we were talking about? There is no norm, okay? Super glue is used sometimes to close your incision. Count your number of staples if you had staples done, all right? How? Okay, let's add one more thing. How long is your incision? That's a good one too, all right? Measure your incision. <laughs> Tell us how long it is. And then um, send me photos if, if you'd like, okay? You can send those photos to contactrussisright at gmail.com. And then I'll just kind of gather them all together. And maybe we'll do an episode or two of uh, people's incisions, all right? And then, you know, if, if you're done with your knee replacement, send me your before and after, at the same time, show me a before, show me an after. Then we could at least show people what it looks like. That would be interesting. I think that would be a good one. Yeah, that's an extra bonus that happened at the end of this video. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that, but as I'm thinking, as I'm talking, I think that would be an interesting video. Okay. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys next time.